Hi, my schoolers. This is my school channel, and my name is Abiola. Remember, in this channel, you will be joining me to solve the Jam CBT Pass question for the subject Physics, the year 2011. Do not go anywhere, stay with us, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school YouTube channel. In this video segment, you will be joining me to solve question 1 to 16. So right there, we are going to start with question 1. A man standing on a lift that is descending does not feel any weight because why? Okay, we are looking at why we are trying to understand what is the reason behind this weightlessness. Okay, a man in a lift that is descending or in an aeroplane, okay, he feels this weightlessness because the acceleration of the lift equals the acceleration due to gravity so where r stands for the reaction on his feet or on the feet of the man okay so that is from the lift so that equals zero since g equals a acceleration of the lift equals acceleration due to gravity so this is why the man feels weightlessness so option c is the correct option question two Two balls X and Y weighing 5 grams and 50 grams, kilograms respectively were thrown up vertically at the same time, okay, with a velocity of 100 meters per second. How will their positions be after one second or one second later, okay? So, uh, once you understand the relationship between acceleration due to gravity and the masses, okay, on Earth, the Earth's gravitational pull, you will know that the action of acceleration due to gravity is irrespective of mass, especially when you remove air resistance. So let's go to the board to prefer solution to this question. So it's very, very easy. We are going to use this. Now, it's going upward against acceleration due to gravity, so it's going to be minus instead of plus, okay? not 2 as minus 2 gs okay acceleration due to gravity once again so the initial velocity is 100 so 100 squared this is zero okay so we have 100 square minus 2 times 10 times s okay so that means when this comes the yeah, it becomes 2 times 10 we have 20 s equals the s is going to change to h the height okay Yes, let's do that. We have H, the vertical distance up, okay? So, because 100 raised to the power 2 is 100 times 100, and that makes 10,000. Dividing both sides by 20. So, 2 in 1,000, that is 500. So 500 meters, okay, so for both body. Remember the relationship when it comes to gravitational field and masses, especially at the same locality. So we have option D, so option D is the correct option. Three, if it takes an object three seconds to fall freely to the ground from a certain height, okay, so what is the distance covered by the object? So we are talking about vertical distance, all right? Up upwards or downwards okay so instead of we saying s equals ut plus half t squared we're going to change the s to h okay so we are going to have h equals ut plus half remember the a acceleration due to gravity we have gt squared okay so we are asked to find what is the distance covered by the object so we have h equals remember we are told if it takes an object three seconds to fall freely okay to the ground so initial velocity that's zero so this is going zero times t this is gone so what we have left is half times acceleration due to gravity that is 10 okay times the time the time is three so three raised to the power two that is nine okay so two times two year one two year five five times nine that is 45 Okay, so the distance you are looking at is 45 meters. So let's go back to the screen to point out 45 meters. That is found in option C. So option C is the correct option. Question 4. 
An object of mass 2 kg moves with a velocity of 10 meters per second around a circle of radius 4 meters. Okay, calculate the centripetal force on the object. So remember that centripetal force, we can use Ft to represent it. Okay, so we have this equals mv square over r. The m we are giving us 2, the velocity 10, that's 10 squared, 10 times 10 over the radius 4. 2 year 1, 2 year 2, 2 year 1, 2 year 5. 5 times 10, 50 times 1, 50 divided by 1, we still have 50. So let's see if we have 50 given to us. 50 newtons to be precise, okay? Centripetal force is measured with the unit newton. So we can find that in option C. So option C is the correct option. Do not forget that we have made a link available for you in the description below. All you need to do is to click on it. Once you click on that link, it's going to take you to the My School website. Okay, right there you can get the My School mobile app or the My School software. So join me as we solve question five. A carpenter on top of a roof of 20.0 meter high dropped a hammer of mass 1.5 kg. Okay, and it fell directly to the ground. Alright, so the kinetic energy of the hammer just before hitting the ground is what? So take note of this, you know, at a certain height, okay, above the ground, the, it is all potential energy, okay, just on the ground, at the ground level, okay, it's all kinetic energy, alright, but you should always note this, okay, the total energy of a body, okay, at each point is equal to the constant mgh, mass times gravity times height, so that is what we are going to use, all right? There are different approaches to tackling this um, question, but I'm going to use this. So, MGH, so we have M as 1.5 times G, that is 10. So, 1.5 times 10, that is 15. So, 15 times 20, that gives you 300 joules. So, the correct option here is option C for 300 joules. Do not forget to hit that like button. Also, click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification so you can get informed immediately we upload the next video content just for you. 6. If a tube of small radius open at both ends is placed in a liquid, the liquid will do what? Okay, this is a concept on capillarity or capillary reaction, okay? The tendency of a liquid to rise or fall in a narrow tube. Okay, so let's go through all of the statements. The liquid will remain at the same level irrespective of whether the liquid wets the glass or not. This is wrong, okay? So we have option B. It will fall below the liquid level if the liquid wets the glass. This is incorrect. Why? Okay, if the liquid wets the glass, we assume that the liquid will be water, okay, or should be water. So if it is water, once you dip a narrow um, tube, a tube into the, um, such kind of um, setup, okay, what you are going to have is the, since the liquid is water that can wet the glass, it's going to rise above the other water level in the container. So, the liquid will fall below the liquid level. This is wrong. The liquid will rise above the liquid level if the liquid is one that actually wets the tube. Okay, so let's look at statement C. Uh, it's going to fall, it's fall, the liquid will fall below the liquid, liquid level if the liquid does not wet the glass. This is correct and this uh, liquid should be taken as mercury, okay? So, when you dip a narrow tube in a mercury setup, okay, what you are going to notice is that the mercury in the tube will go lower, okay, compared to the level of mercury outside the tube in the general container. So, if it doesn't wet the glass, it tells you that it is probably a mercury okay it's mercury so and it's going to fall below the liquid level so the correct option here is option c the liquid will fall below the liquid level if the liquid does not wet the glass option c is the correct option seven an object weighs 22 kilogram in water and 30 kg in air what is the uptrust exerted by the liquid on the object so remember that uptrust in the liquid is the same or we are talking about um, identical setup when it comes to the weight of the liquid displaced so that is just telling you 30 minus this but we can't go direct we have to change this to newton scale okay so that will be 30 times 10 okay and 22 times 10 so this makes 300 this makes 220 so 300 minus Minus 220 that gives us 80 newton so the correct option is option d for 80 newton question 8 a metal of volume 40 centimeter cube is heated from 30 degrees to 90 degrees the increase in volume is what so i'm going to take this as cubic expansivity and we know that that has the value of 3 
times alpha or linear three times linear expansivity so we are asked to find the final volume okay so this tells us that this question is incomplete because when you consider the formula for cubic expansivity it's going to be gamma the sine like y okay equals v2 minus v1 okay over v1 times change in temperature so you can see that we have two parameters missing already we have v2 that we have to look for it's missing and as well we have no value provided for the cubic expansivity so without any further problem or whatever the correct option here is option e no correct option nine a copper wire was subjected to a tensile stress of 7.7 .7 times 10 to power 7. Calculate the strain of the wire. So we have Young modulus. Okay, um, neglect the spelling. So we have Young modulus equals tensile stress over strain. Okay, so stress over strain. Then we have it equal to Young modulus. Okay, which I can just write something like this. All right, so we're asked to look for strain. What do we do? We cross multiply, then we are going to have strain as stress. Remember, stress is force over area of, over the young modulus. So we have um, the stress is given as 7.7 .7 times 10 raised to power 7 divided by the young modulus, which is given as 1.1 times 10 raised to power 11. Okay, this gives you 7, okay, so we have 7 times 10 raised to the power 7, the same base, right? So this all over means divide, and divide changes to minus, so 7 minus 11, okay, so that will be 7 times 10 raised to the power minus 4. This is what we should have, 7 times 10 raised to the power minus 4. Let's see if we can sort this out from the options provided. Of course, that can be found in option C, so option C is the correct option. Do not forget that you can ask your questions right now. All you need to do for yourself is to use the link in the description below, okay? It's going to take you to the My School website. There you are going to ask your questions and you are going to have our solution providers helping you out. So join me as we solve question 10. We have um, this listed out. So, from the statements above, the qualities of a good thermometer are what? Number one, eye sensitivity to temperature change, okay, from the body, uh, not human body per se, but at least, uh, okay, let's take the context of human body, okay? It must be sensitive to um, temperature change, okay, um, from, of the body, it's trying to get its temperature. So, we have um, statement three easy readability, it should be easy to read. Okay, so we have um, four, accuracy over a wide range of temperature, especially when you consider the thermoelectric um, thermometer, okay, it can measure very high temperature. So these are the things we are looking out for, high sensitivity to temperature change, easy readability so that you can take measurements, um, temperature measurements correctly, then accuracy over a wide range of temperature this is equally important so we have statement two three and four they are correct so that is found in option d so option d is the correct option it's possible that you have better explanations in tackling any of the questions we have solved so far please we are so open to learn from you all you need to do is to use that comment section below kindly indicate the question number and the contributions you'd like to make question 11 a machine is used to lift a load of 20 newton through a height of 10 meters. Okay, if the efficiency of the machine is 40%, how much work is done? So, this is talking about uh, the work done on the machine. So, this is the formula we can use for efficiency. Okay, so we can have this efficiency equals the work done by the machine, which can be calculated as um, the mass, okay, times the distance, the height. So, that is 20 the load in this um, sense okay it has been changed from mass to load okay so we have 20 newton for the load load times the distance rather so we have 20 times 10 that is 200 over remember i said the work done by the machine over work done on the machine okay so this is what we are looking for all right times 100 so the efficiency is giving us 40 yes. so we have this Okay, when we cross multiply, we have this equals 200 times 100 divided by 40. Okay, so 
this strikes out. I have four year one, four year five. Five times 100, I have 500. So let's see if we have 500 in the options provided. Of course, we can find that in option B. So option B is the correct option. Number 12. So we have density of the liquid, we have depth of below the surface of the liquid, we have surface area of the liquid. So in which of the statements above will pressure be dependent? So pressure is dependent on density of the liquid and depth. Okay, so if you, if you want to take into account the factor regarding depth, okay, so the deeper you go, the more pressure you feel. Okay, so for a liquid, all right. So this is, of course, statements one and two they are correct concerning pressure or they are what pressure depends on so statement one and two where can we find that we can find that in option a so option a is the correct option to question 12. question 13 which of the following could be effectively used to reduce friction okay there are ways to reduce friction you can streamline the moving body parts okay you can use um grease you can use oil you can use different um materials so but not uh, any of this aside from grease so what we can use we can use grease oil and what have you so the correct option here is option b we can use grease to reduce friction remember friction causes wear and tear okay so correct option is option b for grease 14 which of the following types of waves need a medium for propagation so any type of wave that require medium for propagation is a mechanical wave Okay, so we have examples like sound wave, okay, water wave, and what have you. So every other one we have here, they are not mechanical waves. So the only um, type of mechanical wave that we have provided there is sound wave. It requires a material medium for its propagation, okay, and sound cannot travel in a vacuum. So the correct option here is option A for sound waves. 15 which of the following electromagnetic waves has the highest frequency so i'm going to arrange this frequency okay from the lowest starting from the lowest down to the highest okay so we are going to start the the lowest frequency here is radio waves followed by infrared okay followed by visible light followed by ultraviolet okay then we have x-ray and gamma ray so x-ray is the highest here at least for what we have provided so the wave that has the highest frequency based on the options here is x ray so option c is the correct option 16 a perfect emitter or absorber of radiant energy is a dull black body or surface so the correct option here is option b for black body right there we've come to the end of this video content but there are more segments to come all you need to do for yourself is to hit that like button also click on the subscribe button and always tap bell notifications so you can get alerts immediately we put up the next video content just for your convenience